Hey guys, it's good to see you. Uh, I am talking today about the glass ceiling, the energetic glass ceiling. So as we go through here, if you have questions or if you have any um, personal experiences that you want to share, feel free to type them into the comments section. Uh, but until then, I am just going to get off and run in here. So the first type of energetic glass ceiling. And, and so let me let me just say what I mean by an energetic glass ceiling. Let's start with that. So an energetic glass ceiling is when you are having a, <clears throat> you've got a goal for your business and you're moving forward towards that goal and something just keeps getting in the way. You just can't quite get past whatever dollar amount it is. So for some people it'd be 50 grand, for some people it'd be 500 grand, it doesn't matter. But at some point there's a, a, a set point. Hey Noah, how's it going? And so the, the glass ceiling will be different for every person. Okay, so let's just start with that. The reasons for the glass ceiling are a variety of different things. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of reasons. You have ancestral issues. You have uh, limited um, earning potential because of family beliefs and staying loyal to your family. Uh, and then you have past life issues, okay? And on rare occasion, there may also be curse issues. So those are rare. They do happen. I've run across them, but they, they're rare. So let's go through one by one, okay? So the first thing is um, the past life issue. This is really actually very common. So when you have a past life in which you were killed for your gifts, it is often going to be difficult for you to find a way to let yourself be seen. Okay. <laughs> and, and because when you were seen before you were killed for being seen and that was kind of a problem, right? Uh, and it can be as simple as that, or it can be more complex. I mean, I, I did work with a client, uh, the other day and his issue was that it was a past life in which he died, but he wasn't killed for his gifts. He was uh, successful at his work and then he, uh, he got noticed by the king and the king brought him in as his own personal uh, advisor. And eventually he fell out of favor with the king and the king banished him from the entire country. And because he was banished, he was left out to fend for himself and he could no longer make a living and he died of starvation. Okay. So that's something where he was able to make good money, but he wasn't able to make great money because he was doing okay when he was making good money in that life. But the moment he made a little too much, he got noticed and that's when things went south for him. And so, energetically, his spirit was keeping him from being able to do that. And so we had to clear that, right? So uh, Noah says after driving beat up cars for 12, uh, beat up 12 year old cars, they brought bought a four year old BMW a few weeks ago, there was definitely a big adjustment <laughs> to step into the BMW energy from broken down VW. And yes, that's very true. And this is a self definition thing, right? This is one of those things that the Owning an, a luxury car, even if it's an old luxury car, but owning a luxury car, it, it's a it's a mindset difference. It's a self definition difference. It's I'm somebody who drives a nice car, even if it's an old nice car, it's a nice car, right? And those are types of things that if you're not paying attention to your self definition, that can also get in the way. It's likely to get in the way in ways other than the uh, energetic ceiling, uh, income ceiling, but it, it will definitely get in the way. And so that's the past life issue, right? Now let's talk about your limited earnings because of parental issues. Okay. If you have a parent who is not supportive and you want to belong and your only way of belonging in the family is to be the loser that your parent always said that you were, well, you're going to have a hard time making money. You're going to need to find a way to change that scenario, right? 
let's, but it doesn't even have to be that, right? It could simply be that your family thinks rich people suck. And if you become a rich person, then they won't like you, is your thought. And so uh, Kathy had a client like this years ago. And uh, what she did was the, the client was like right up against the million dollar mark. And he just couldn't get over it, couldn't get over it, couldn't get over it, couldn't get over it. And every time he would do it, he would just fall back down. He'd, he'd lose the sale or whatever, right? And so what she did was she figured out that, that this was the issue, that mom thought that rich people were awful and he didn't want to be a rich person because he didn't want mom to think he was awful. And Kathy looked at him and said, well, okay, so what if you bought your mother her dream home if you made a million dollars? And he was like, oh, I could do that. I could totally do that. She's like, pretty sure your mom wouldn't think you suck if you bought her her dream home. And she, he's like, I, no, I could do that. And so that's what he did. And the minute he gave himself permission to do that, he broke that million dollar mark that he'd been trying and failing for years to do. And he bought his mother the house and she walked around like Queen Bee going, my son is so successful. Look, he bought me my dream house and isn't that awesome? And so he got to belong and she loved the fact that he was successful and he got to make many more millions over the years to come. So that's another possibility. Then there's a, an ancestor issue, right? So when you have an ancestor who had a problem, and so here's, here's why ancestral issues become, become issues. Um, when our parents do something, when they are in pain, as children, we take on that pain out of love for our parents, thinking that if we take some of that pain, then they will feel better. It doesn't work that way, but that's the child logic, right? And so if you have this situation and then you see it happen over and over, generation to generation, where they've taken on the pain of their parents and their children take it on from them, and it becomes this ancestral issue that, that goes down the line. When you have uh, an ancestor who has created a dynamic of lack and poverty within the family line, this can create a, a block to making good money. And it could be a variety of different stories. I've seen a variety of different stories over the years. Uh, but regardless of the story, the, the challenge is that you're owning something that isn't yours. Right. And so then the, the challenge becomes, how do you give it back and, and deal? You know, I just walked a client through this the other day as well. Um, you know, his father was unsupportive and miserable and unhappy and he needed to hand uh, all of this stuff that was going on. There was multiple different pieces to this one that, you know, one piece had to be handed back to, to an ancestor further back in the line. One piece had to be handed back to his father and, you know, another piece had to go somewhere else. And so sometimes these are really complex issues. In fact, they are often really complex issues. It's, it's rarely just like one thing. It's, it's when you've done everything right and you're still not making money, this is when you need to call me, right? <laughs> because it, it, it's, it, there's a complex issue going on. And if you were going to figure it out easily, you would have done it by now, right? So uh, you've got to pay attention to the fact that when you're looking at this stuff, it is sometimes simple, but rarely, okay? And so let's, let's talk about the last one, the curse, okay? I had a family that I worked on and a shaman generations back. I mean, many, many, many generations back. This shaman was going insane and he made an assumption about their ancestor that was inaccurate. He, he thought in his delusions that the ancestor had you know, tried to steal from him or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the situation was, but, but he cursed this ancestor and then he died and then he haunted the entire family line and continued to curse every generation going forward. And he was still nuts. 
Okay, he, he had gone round the bend. So clearing this was complicated <laughs> because, you know, this was a very powerful shaman who was not in his right mind and could not be negotiated with. And so this, be, you know, it required a, a creative solution that I had to come up with for that. So, you know, it, it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it's a curse. And this family, they were like, I think we're cursed. And I was like, mm, I doubt you're cursed. And I looked, I'm like, yeah, you're cursed. <laughs> Who knew, right? So, you know, these are things that you've got to take into account as well. And, you know, sometimes your business is being impacted not just by the family line or things like that, but it could be it being impacted by the physical space in which it is operated or by the energy of the owners or the investors. You know, if you've got an investor who is non mentis, you know, they are just not all there and they've got all kinds of ick associated with them. If they're being ridden by something or they're being possessed, that will definitely negatively impact the business as well. And if you've got an energy, if you, I, I just did a podcast on this. Um, it's coming out this weekend. It's called Ley Lines on the Spirit Sherpa podcast, S-H-E-R-P-A. And the, if your business exists on a negative ley line, that's going to be a problem for you getting enough business to support the the business and be able to make money uh, yourself to support you. So, you know, adjusting the ley lines, adjusting the energetics of the business itself. If there's a lot of negative energy in the business and you haven't cleared the business, if you've got, you know, ghosts or poltergeists, you know, we just did a, a thing here in Richmond where we, uh, where I worked with another practitioner and she cleared the poltergeist and I'm setting up the space and structuring the, the new intentions and layering on protections and all sorts of fun, thing, fun things there. So, you know, that's another way in which your business can be impacted. There's lots of ways in which uh, your revenues are related to the energetics. And so, as you're going through and you're looking at the energetics of your business, one of the things I want you to pay attention to is, are you making the money that you want to make? Is it coming in the way it should? And if it's not, what's in the way, right? Uh, if you are curious about that, then you can sign up for, if you look in the description on this video, there's a, a uh, you can just say yes in the, in the, uh, comments below and I'll give you a uh, link to an energy audit, a business energy audit with me and I can take a look at that for you. No charge. Um, I can take a look at that for you and diagnose it and see see what's going on and you know what sort of thing you're dealing with. Uh, Noah's asking, can your clients impact your business? Individually, probably not. Collectively, definitely so. Okay, so uh, individually, assuming you have a lot of clients, uh, then then the amount of impact an individual client has uh, on your business is not going to be significant. But if you have a lot of clients, all of the same sort of energetic, and they are like dragging down your business, or if you let them impact you personally, then yes, that can that can actually have an impact on your business as well. So, you know, targeting positive affluent clients is probably a really good way to feel like you have positive affluent business. Um, but the, it's not required. There are a lot of companies who make good money targeting people, you know, with lower income levels or not as positive or whatever, but keeping the energy of the way that they engage with the client on a positive note, even if the client is having more challenges, right? So clearing of your house tomorrow. Yes, Jennifer, I highly recommend clearing your house. It's a really good idea. Smudge is your friend. Please use smudge and not Palo Santo because Palo Santo is endangered. And so everybody's saying, oh, Palo Santo, but please don't do that. Um, but smudge would be fantastic for, for doing your house. And, uh, you know, we could talk about other ways to clear as well. But yes, if you're not generally clearing your business on a regular basis, you definitely want to do that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to call that good for today. Uh, again, if you want to have an energy audit with me, just say yes in the comments and I will be happy to 
uh, give you that link and, you know, do a complimentary uh, conversation with you about how, you know, what's going on. And otherwise, I will see you next week. Have a good weekend. Bye.